Hey, it's Justin from Jacob Buck Reptiles here, bringing you the next installment of JKR Pro Tips. And today we're going to be talking about FlexWad. It's something that several YouTube members have asked me for in the comment section. And I actually got two emails this week, people asking questions about FlexWad and even saying they're scared of FlexWad. And I want to talk to you about it. Hopefully you can get past all your fears. It's a very safe product and something that will really help you guys as you take your collection to the next level. So FlexBot comes in several different forms. You can get it actually in a very, like a retail form. This is made by Exoterra and I've had this for years. I don't even know if you can still find them just like this, but essentially it's FlexBot. It's pre-wired by a retailer. And here on the back, it has like an adhesive sticky side that you can peel off. This is made for more of like an aquarium application where you put this on the bottom of your aquarium to heat your, heat your hot spot in the aquarium for it, your reptile. Um, this is this is an easy way to go if you have a, a real standard application like an aquarium. If you need something for racks or something you're building yourself, um, or just in a non-standard application, you're going to kind of need to go out on your own. These are your options as far as flex lock for that. Generally, there is a there's a three inch flex watt, there's a four inch flex watt, and then there's the eleven. And these are more for a rack system. You can put these on the back end, backs of the tubs. And let me roll it out here so I can show you guys what it's all about. Essentially, there is two sides here in which the heat, the current flows through, and it heats up the black part here in the middle to warm your animal. This is a very safe product. It's completely um, encapsulated in a plastic, so that is you know won't shock or anything. And you can buy it any size roll you want. It's basically purchased by the foot. I purchased mine from, you know, either LL Reptiles or or the Bean Farm or some of these places. But, and I normally get mine like a roll of 100 feet, which is, you know, a real, real thick roll. I'm just seeing here's a scrap left over from one of my one of my racks I built a long time ago. But this is a great product. This is a 6 watt, 3 inch flex watt, that's what this is. And the nice thing about the 6 watt, there's also a 10 watt, and I believe a 12, I know there's a 10. 6 watt only gets up to about 115 degrees if you leave it going full blast without a thermostat. So the good news is is that this will not get so hot that it will melt your, melt your tubs, that it won't melt itself. It's a very safe product in the case of a thermostat fail. Now it's still, you know, it's still can overeat your animal, it can still kill your animal, don't get me wrong, but it does not get ultra, ultra hot. The 11 inch flex watt is probably better in the case of a caging where you're going to be warming an entire end of a large cage like from like a larger animal. And it also comes in a roll form. You see here. And it's also separated by in feet and you can actually cut here on the lines to kind of meet the length that you need for your animal and for your caging application. Again, very safe product. This is a 20 watt. 11 inch flex watt. Flex watt's great because you can put it on the back of your rack and it's really thin. You can put it between the rack and the tub. And so the tub slides right over it and it warms that end of the aquarium. If you see here, I'm standing in front of a rack here, the, the back of a rack. And the reason why is because I wanted to show you kind of the practical application of it, how it's done. This is my one of my ARS racks. And you see here they have a metal um, part here that goes along the back's very tub. The tub slides right over the top of it. Now underneath this metal is a flex watt strip. And it's also insulated on the bottom so that it retains heat. But this is a flex watt strip that is hooked into the thermostat and is warming the bottom of the tub. The bottom of the tub as the snake lays over that they can get hot or they can go to the other end of the tub where the flex watt is not, and that's their cool end. So essentially what I have here is just one piece of flex watt with a piece of metal over it, just for strength and to hold it there. And that is, that's the great af application and use of flex watt that so many people are using, it's great. So here we've got our thermostat. This is the thermostat for this rack, I pulled it down from the top. It's not plugged in right now. So essentially what I have here is I have, this is the probe, it rolls around here and I have it coming right here. It's going to put it directly on top of the heating element of your aquarium or, or a rack. And I have a, a strip here of aluminum tape which conducts heat really well and it holds the heat in. So essentially that is reading the temperature of this flex watt 
and running it into the thermostat, which controls the power to that, and it'll make sure that it is heated correctly. It'll turn off at 90 degrees, back on when it drops down to 89, etc. So that is how the temperature on these is controlled and make sure that it doesn't overheat. As long as you get a good thermostat, the Herbstat is an excellent thermostat. Um, it's proportional, so it doesn't click on and off. It just raises and lowers the temperature. Um, the power going to your heating element um, proportionally. So now I'm going to show you guys how to wire flex watt. So if you want to get some yourself, you know what to do. Now there's a couple ways to do this. A lot of people will just go out and they'll buy an extension cord. They'll clip off the ends and they will melt the plastic all over the top of the ends here of the uh, elements and will solder the cord to this. Basically you're going to have you know one edge, one side of the cord on each side to run power through the flex watt. Now you can buy this product though. And this is an excellent little product especially if you are, are, are new to uh, to soldering or don't want to don't want to go that far out. This is a great little thing you can buy and I believe you get this at Triple L Reptiles as well. And I'll go ahead and put the link in the video so you guys can, can know where to get it. But these come pre-made. They've got these little clips on here. Essentially the clips have metal, you know, sharp metal punches on there which is going to punch through the plastic of the flex watt and create a connection for the power. So I'm going to do this here while we're while we're rolling so you guys can see. So I'm just going to seat this on here as best I can. Let's get it go a little better than that. Okay, once I get it on there pretty good. Hold on, make it a little wider. There we go. Okay, I'm going to take my pair of pliers and I'm going to crimp it down. And it's going to pierce through the plastic and make a connection with that heating element on the flex watt. I'm going to do it to the other side. Ooh, got my 11 inch air and spiraling. Okay, now we've created a connection. All I have to do is plug this in, and this heat strip is going to heat up to 116 degrees, which is the, the maximum for this 11, 11 watt flex watt. Problem with this setup is that these are live. If you were to touch one of these at once, you'd get a, a nice shock you know, at 110 from the, from the wall. So, the product that's also sold with these clips are little shields for it. These up here. And these shields cover this up just so that you can keep yourself from being shocked. And they don't fit as well as I would like, honestly, but they did the job. You see here, they just they clip together, the sandwiching the the flex wall and that little element that you just put on there. Hold on. If you've done this before, you can tell I'm doing this wrong right now. So I'm gonna fix that. Okay. All right, so we got our cord coming out the bottom of it here. We got the shield covering the part there that's going to shock you if you touch it. And we are set. So now what I'd like to do is this clip doesn't hold itself together all that well. So I'll take some electrical tape, get some fancy blue stuff here. Take it and I'll wrap it around here a few times real tight just to hold that clip together. There. Now you have one clip done and that's shielded. You do the same thing to the other side. Put that at the back of your rack. Hook this in into a nice thermostat with the probe sitting on the heat tape measuring the temperature the heat, the heat tape is getting to and you're set. It's a great product. It's not going to fail. It's not going to burn up. Only problem, only problem you're going to run into is if you cheap out on your thermostat. That's where you're going to have an issue with overheating. You want to, you want to make your investment into the thermostat. This is, this is cheap, like two bucks a foot, two fifty a foot. If you make that investment in the thermostat, you'll be ensuring that this will work forever. It really will. Hold it back up a little bit. So that's the scoop on FlexWatt. Hope you guys found it interesting. If you haven't used FlexWatt a lot. I would definitely encourage you to give it a shot if you're working on some homemade projects, homemade caging. Hey, I've been there. 
before I brought bought caging, I built tons and tons and tons of racks and uh, and melamine caging, all kinds of stuff. Used flex a lot really well, and it works great. You know, I use it all the time. So I definitely suggest it. And if you're having problems with one part of your cage not getting warm enough, don't go out and buy an Undertake heater. Um, if it's not going to work quite right, you can make something that works just perfectly by using this. So, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about FlexWatt, comment below. I'll, uh, I'll respond to your comments if it's a good question, and uh, or even if it's a bad question sometimes. So, thanks a lot, and I appreciate it. Have a good one.